everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Claire Fraze and I am an award-winning young adult author who makes videos on this channel sharing the actionable writing tips that helped me make my own writing better. And I have a book recommendation for you today. I recently read a book on craft that made me think about storytelling in a completely different way, and that book is this book. It's called Dynamic Story Creation by Maxwell Alexander Drake, and today I'm going to talk to you about this book and share with you all the things that I learned from reading it. Not all of the things, but give you a little sneak peek of some of the things that I learned. Really the one major thing that I learned from reading this book, and encourage you to go seek out this book and read it for yourself. This is in no way sponsored by this book or the author, although <laughs> if you want to sponsor me, feel free. But this is just a resource that I found that really helped me, and I just want to talk about it with you and share it with you in the hopes that it will also help you. So stick around if you like learning about storytelling, if you are looking for books or resources to dive into to learn more about storytelling, and without further ado, let's get started. So I learned about this book after watching one of the video conference talk playbacks from the 20 Books to 50K conference in November of 2021. For those of you who don't know, 20 Books to 50K is a very popular Facebook group for indie authors. I do not know the entire history, but I joined 20, 20 Books to 50K about two years ago when I was just gearing up to publish They Stay and learned a lot about indie publishing and they share a lot of tips and resources and success stories in the Facebook group. So if you're interested in going and learning more about self-publishing, that is a great group to join if you're just looking to soak in knowledge. But 20 Books to 50K does a conference and they I wasn't able to attend the conference last year, but they did record a bunch of the talks and put them on YouTube. So I was working through all of the conference talks about maybe in December of last year, and I stumbled upon this one. And Maxwell Alexander Drake did a bunch of different talks about storytelling and theme and plot creation. And the way that he phrased things and talked about things in the videos just blew my mind and framed things in a way that I'd never thought about them before, but that really clicked in my head. And so I went and I bought his book and I actually, he has two books. He has this book and also a book on prose that I felt found very helpful. But this is the book that was really about story and story construction. So that's the one that, that I read first. This book dives into a lot of things, all about how to learn the writing craft, what makes a good story, the basics of story structure. But really the main thesis or the really unique thing about this book that I haven't found in any other books about writing so far is the separation of talking about the invisible story versus the physical story and how every story has both an invisible layer of thematic things going on within the story that aren't explicitly talked about and a physical layer of very tangible characters and settings and conflicts. Near the beginning of this book, Drake says that there are a limited number of stories that have been told throughout history and that are being told right now. Because all of these crazy different stories so that all their different conflicts and set in different worlds are really stories about the same things. There are a limited number of generalized human conditions that stories seek to examine and poke holes at and, you know, talk about in some way. And so if you boil every single physical story down to its themes, you will find very many commonalities between these stories. Some examples of these common themes are can good defeat evil? S lots of stories will attempt to answer this question and pit a good force against an evil force and have them duke it out over the course of the entire story. And usually it's the good guy that comes out victorious, in which case it is a happy ending story. If the bad guy were to come out victorious, then it would be a tragedy. Because in stories, there's always a right and a wrong answer to this thematic question that the story poses. And if the correct answer is chosen by the protagonist of the story, so for example, can good defeat evil? If the protagonist chooses a side of the good and good is able to defeat evil, then it's a happy ending story. But if the protagonist chooses the wrong, answer to this question, main thematic question of the story, then it is a tragedy. So not all major thematic questions are as simple as plain good versus evil. For example, in Miss Congeniality, the example that Drake gives in this book as to the major theme of Miss Congeniality is, can a woman who has proven she can do a man's job also be the epitome of what society deems womanly? This is the question that Miss Congeniality, the movie, is posing. By having Gracie save the day in stilettos, Miss Congeniality is answering their major thematic question that yes, 
women can do these traditional men's jobs while also being the epitome of femininity. The main thematic question of Star Wars is actually maybe my favorite example of this major thematic question that stories have to have, and Drake writes in the book as the question that Star Wars is posing. Is it better to rely on tangible things you can see or trust in the internal belief that there's more to life, something greater than the physical world around us? It's this tension between science and faith that duke it out over the course of Star Wars A New Hope, and the climax of Star Wars A New Hope actually forces Luke to choose between these two things, and there is a right and a wrong, and he chooses the right one by relying on faith and the force, this whole metaphor for faith and the force that is set up over the course of the movie. He chooses to rely on the force and then saves the day. If he had chosen to rely solely on science, he would have failed and many people would have died. So that climax actually sets up this major thematic question in a physical way, for the hero to have to choose one way or another. And that's what makes the climax of the movie so satisfying and resonant when watching it. All of these concepts are explained way better in the book. I'm just giving you a bit of a taste for the kinds of things that are discussed in this book and why it is so interesting to read. Another example that Drake gives in this book a lot is Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo is a movie that has a very clear theme and it is very clear how that theme is battling against, or the two sides of the theme are duking it out over the course of the story. So Finding Nemo is about a fish named Marlin who has a son named Nemo, and Marlin is very protective over Nemo, and Nemo uh, is not as protective about himself. He wants to go and explore and be with his friends, and Marlin wants to keep him really, really safe, and his sole purpose is keeping Nemo safe. And then when something happens to Nemo and Nemo is whisked away, Marlin has to go out and find Nemo and bring him back home. Over the course of Finding Nemo, Marlin goes on an emotional journey from being an extremely overprotective parent to a parent who knows when to allow Nemo the space to self-actualize and come of age on his own. When he starts the journey, he's super overprotective and then he goes and starts becoming a little bit more lax and he trusts Nemo more. So these are the two sides of the theme that are presented. Finding Nemo poses the question, is it better to be an overprotective parent or to allow your children the space to come of age on their own. And Marlin has to learn over the course of the story as things happen that challenge each other. So there are things where, you know, being overprotective might have helped Nemo, and there are times where being overprotective really hurt Nemo, and being overprotective is why Nemo went missing in the first place. And there are times when Marlin is a little bit more relaxed and trusts Nemo that the day is actually saved and the plot progresses in a good way. So the story has chosen that the better parent is the parent that allows their kid to have a little more space. And Marlin goes on this big journey and then eventually during the climax is presented with a situation that forces him to choose whether to be overprotective or a little bit more hands off. And because he chooses to be a little more hands off, everything is okay and there's a happy ending. But if he had chosen to still be overprotective during the climax of the story, things would have gone wrong and it would have been a sad ending. So in Finding Nemo, this invisible thematic layer where there are all these different events that illustrate the character learning these lessons that the theme challenges them to learn in order for them to make the right choice in the end, intersects with the, with the physical layer because you need to create physical characters and situations and interesting things to keep your reader engaged with the story and this thematic question that it's raising. Because if you take a question like, is it better to be an overprotective parent or a more hands-off parent, you can create a ton of different stories around that. The only story doesn't have to be the one about the fish. You can create stories in the real world, you can create supernatural stories, you can have all sorts of different physical elements around those stories, but the invisible layers stay consistent throughout the story. So your physical layer is what differentiates your story and what makes it interesting and where you can take some creative liberties to make it unique from other stories, but your invisible layer is what your story needs in order to connect to the thing that makes us human and that makes us love devouring stories. This is honestly the only book I've ever read that talks about this stuff in this way and in this much detail, so if what I've said in this video is interesting to you, I highly recommend checking out Drake's book. He has a book on Amazon, an ebook version of this, and also the physical copy version. I really like my physical copy and have made lots of little notes in the margins of my physical copy, so I 
always recommend physical copies for that reason. Again, this is not sponsored in any way. This is just me sharing a resource that was super helpful to me in the hopes that it will also be helpful to you. I think that the videos, the virtual videos on the 20 books to 50k recordings page have expired already. I don't think that they still exist. But I am pretty sure that Maxwell Alexander Drake will be at the in-person conference in the fall this November. So if any of you are interested in coming to the 20 Folks to 50k conference in November, I am sure that you'd be able to come to one of his talks live then. But honestly, all the stuff that was in the talks is also in this book, so you're going to learn pretty much everything that he goes over in the talks by reading this book. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like this video and also subscribe to my channel. I'm the author of the young adult supernatural thriller They Stay, which tells the story of a 16-year-old girl whose younger brother goes missing and she has to team up with a weird girl in school who has the ability to see ghosts to find him. Uh, the sequel to that book, also They Whisper, is out and I'm currently writing book three. I make videos sharing different things that I've learned about writing that have really helped me in the hopes that they'll also help you. So like it, subscribe, I hope you have a fantastic week, and as always, happy writing.